Welcome to a lesson on solving linear Diophantine equations. I've also heard this pronounced Diophantine equations. Discrete math deals with whole numbers of things. Equations which are intended to only have integer solutions were first studied in the third century by the Greek mathematician Diophantus of Alexandria, and as such are called Diophantine or Diophantine equations. Probably the most famous example of a Diophantine equation is a squared plus b squared equals c squared from the Pythagorean theorem. The integer solutions to this equation are called Pythagorean triples. In general, solving Diophantine equations is very challenging. In fact, there is probably no general algorithm for deciding whether a Diophantine equation has a solution, a result known as Matiasevich's theorem. We will restrict our focus to linear Diophantine equations, which are considerably easier to work with. An equation in two or more variables is called a Diophantine equation if only integer solutions are of interest. A linear Diophantine equation takes the form a sub one x sub one plus a sub two x sub two plus dot 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 plus a sub n x sub n equals b for constants a sub one through a sub n and b. A solution to a Diophantine equation is a solution to the equation consisting only of integers. We have the tools we need to solve linear Diophantine equations. We will consider as a main example the equation 51x plus 87y equals 123. The general strategy will be to convert the equation to a congruence, then solve that congruence. This is certainly not the only way to proceed. A more common technique would be to apply the Euclidean algorithm. However, using a congruence can be a little bit faster and is presented here primarily for a variety. So given our equation, first check if perhaps there are no solutions because a divisor of 51 and 87 is not a divisor of 123. If a divisor of 51 and 87 is not a divisor of 123, then there are no integer solutions. Really, we need to check whether the greatest common divisor of 51 and 87 divides 123. Well, the greatest common divisor or greatest common factor of 51 and 87 is three. Since three does divide 123, we do have a solution. At this point, we might as well divide both sides of the equation by three to simplify the equation. Dividing both sides by three gives us a simplified equation, 17x plus 29y is equal to 41. Now observe, if there are going to be solutions, then for those values of x and y, the two sides of the equation must have the same remainder as each other, no matter what we divide by. In particular, if we divide both sides by 17, the coefficient of x, we must have the same remainder. Thus, we can safely write 17x plus 29y is congruent to 41 mod 17. Notice we chose 17, the coefficient of x, because 17x will have a remainder of zero if we have modulus 17. This will allow us to reduce the congruence to just one variable. We could have used a congruence mod 29, the coefficient of y, although there is usually a good reason to select a smaller choice, as this will allow us to reduce the other or larger coefficient. So now that we have 17x plus 29y is congruent to 41 mod 17, we will now solve the congruence for y. Let's do this on the next slide. So again, now that we have 17x plus 29y is congruent to 41 mod 17, we can simplify the congruence by adding and subtracting multiples of 17. We can subtract 17x from 17x because 17x is congruent to zero mod 17. We can subtract 17y from 29y because 17y is congruent to zero mod 17 and we can subtract 34 from 41 because zero is congruent to 34 mod 17. Notice two times 17 is 34. So subtracting 17x from 17x gives us zero x, the x term drops out. 29y minus 17y is 12y, 41 minus 34 is seven. We now have the simplified congruence, 12y is congruent to seven mod 17. To solve for y, we would like to divide both sides by 12, but notice right now, seven is not a multiple of 12. So now we need to add multiples of 17 to seven until we get a multiple of 12. In this case, if we add 17 to seven, we get 24, which is a multiple of 12. So again, we can add 17 to seven because zero is congruent to 17 mod 17. This gives us the congruence 12y is congruent to 24 mod 17 and now we can divide both sides by 12. Just remember, when dividing, 
we also have to divide the modulus of 17 by the greatest common divisor of 12 and 17, which in this case, though, is just one. To simplify, we divide 12y by 12, which gives us y. We divide 24 by 12, which gives us two. We divide 17 by one, which doesn't change. We still have mod 17. And now that we have the congruence solved for y, we can express y as y equals two plus 17k, where k is 700. This comes from the congruence and equality property shown here at the bottom of the screen. To find x, we substitute two plus 17k for y into either the original or simplified equation. I'm gonna go ahead and use a simplified equation, which gives us 17x plus 29 times the quantity two plus 17k equals 41. Simplifying and solving for x, we have x equals negative one minus 29k, where k is an integer. We have now found all these solutions to the Diophantine equation. For each k, we have x equals negative one minus 29k, and y equals two plus 17k, which will satisfy the equation. If we want to, we can check a few of the cases. For example, when k is equal to zero, we have x equals negative one and y equals two. If we sub these into the simplified equation, we have 17 times negative one plus 29 times two, which is equal to 41. For a couple other cases, if k is equal to three, we have x equals negative 88, y equals 53, and for k equals negative two, we have x equals 57, and y equals negative 32. I hope you found this helpful.